Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I'm going to show you a guide about Gimli. Gimli is among the best commanders in the game. So this is something I have to tell you right off the bat. I like him even more than Theoden, Eomir and Gandalf the Grey. This commander is so strong. He has so many skills that just make sense. And even his commander typing is perfect for him. And in this game it is kind of rare to have the right typing for the right build, but this guy has it all. You won't regret pushing your Gimli to respect 25. The more respect, the stronger he gets. But yeah, after having established how good his leader typing fits him, let's see what his attributes offer. His highest attribute is by far his might attribute and that's, that works totally fine with what this commander is doing followed by his focus stat but that is so low the important thing about his focus stat is that if you aim to unlock Gimli's respect 10 item you should at least have 100 focus towards level 50 just to unlock the special effect pursuit on his r10 item and then moving forward to Gimli's speed attribute we can see that he is kind of short in speed but this isn't really making him any weaker we may have some experiments with the Fiddle of the Eldest and Blitz just to see how Gimli is doing when he is getting the first turns to hit. Like, is he snowballing good enough? I don't know, we still have to try that out. But yeah, so far he is a very strong commander and he just works. Right now I have this gear, the Hammer of Moria with lethal weapon, Superior Hallberg, unfortunately not with fire protection. I'm still waiting for that special effect to drop and the cask of submerged isle with ages and this is in my opinion all right i'm gonna get some hate for this but i have to say it anyway in my opinion this is the best helmet with this special effect in the game i mean you can get the same effect over here with the hunter's guide and that is perfect too last but not least we have his uh, accessory Erebos pride we do have better options for it but that is something we are going to deep dive in the itemization part first Let's have a look at his skills. And just like always, I'm going to give you a general overview first. His bottom respect zero skill lock bearer gives him a bit of self-sustain for his army. It is okay, but this is not what he specializes in. So let's just skip this. Protect elves. Now this is what we aim to get since now your tankiest dwarven unit is going to protect your elven unit. Elven units tend to be squishy like the ranged elven units and with this you can provide them the so desperately needed protection of dwarven units and it just works iron warriors or or let's say guardians are perfect bodyguards for those elven units then we have friendly relations now this is mitigating the damage your elven and dwarven units receive also okay but not the main thing we aren't going to focus on this at the top we have respect zero title experience warrior now this is increasing gimli's normal attack damage and once you have maxed it out, it's also increasing the damage of Gimli against melee units by 10%. But only Gimli's damage, not that of your army. Keep that in mind. At the top we have Hunt Down. This is a nice debuffing effect. Whenever Gimli hits, he applies a debuff that makes the enemy unit receive more damage when next hit by anything. Like it, it could be your army that is hitting that enemy unit or your Gimli with a damaging skill afterwards. And it can stack up two times. It's It also scales with might. This is such a great skill. Also consider the fact that when you have the giant hammer with the special effect Frenzy, that way you can proc this twice in just one round which is huge but in the itemization part i will show you that weapon once more then we have collaboration i think this is kind of self-explanatory this further enhances the normal attack damage with additional physical damage on top at respect 3 we have durance blood now this is increasing the commander damage of gimli and when you max it out also plus 15 might a great title overall now you may ask yourself what is a skill all these blue abilities you see over here are considered skills you see it says skill over here it says skill so by maxing out durance blood all of these blue abilities get an enhancement then we have whirlwind this skill activates every three rounds and is going to target two enemy units and then deal a certain percentage physical damage this skill is prioritizing melee units 
And whenever you are fighting an army that is consisting of only one unit, that's fine too. Since then, you are going to hit twice against that one unit. And then we have all in. I think this is the highest burst damage Gimli has, which is also why you want to max this out. But it has also a downside. Whenever you have hit something, the next damaging ability that follows after all in is going to be mitigated by a huge amount, which is why in this skill order I'm about to show to you you need to watch something. Like, whatever comes after shouldn't deal lots of damage or else it is getting mitigated. Then at respect 5 we have Lord of the Glittering Caves. Now this makes it so that the enemy melee units receive more damage. Keep in mind that doesn't mean Gimli himself is dealing more damage against them. This counts only for your army's damage. So this is kinda interesting because it isn't stated in that way. The game needs to do a better job in telling us that. If you max this title out, your army, your melee units receive 5% less damage, which is kinda nice. At the top we have break defenses. This is on a one round cooldown, which means every other round it is going to be activated. Kinda nice, since this isn't only dealing lots of damage against one target, it is also decreasing the defensive stat by a certain percentage for one round. This is great because in the fight this is going to overlap with Whirlwind at some time, I think in round 6 for, it, for example, and then you are going to deal more damage with this combination. Like you break the defenses and then deal even more damage with Whirlwind. The same goes for All In, even more damage with All In. And then we have Heavily Wounded, now this is one of Gimli's big features, since now you can just cancel any incoming healing every 4 rounds. And this is lasting for 2 rounds whenever it hits. Alright, so this is a general overview. Now let me show you his skill order and this is very important. Like Gimli is very sensitive to his skill order. You have to get this right or you are losing lots of damage. So I'm going to spend 2 points over here, 2 points over Durant's Blood, 1 point over Experienced Warrior. This isn't the important part, this is just preparation for the blue abilities which I'm about to pick. Now at this point, if you want to include an elven unit into your army, feel free to go lock bearer, one point into a protect elves, but in his top respect zero title and uh, respect three build, that's untypical. People tend to go with one unit in their army, like a tank unit such as the guardian or the iron warrior, or let's say with 50% uh, Guardians and 50% Ram Riders, two units in your army. In that case, what we want to happen is, we first want to break the army's defenses, then follow up with one of our strongest abilities being Whirlwind. Since breaking defenses has been activated, Whirlwind is going to deal more damage. The same goes for All In. But now we have the side effect of All In, which we need to get rid of which we can by picking Heavily Wounded. Both skills, All In and Heavily Wounded, have the same cooldown. Like the on round 4, they are going to be activated. Every 4 rounds, which is kinda nice. We now know that the side effect has been taken care of by Heavily Wounded. And then we want to have Hunt Down and also Collaboration. Now, what is interesting is that after Heavily Wounded has been activated and bypassed the side effect of All In. Collaboration kicks in, which is nice because Collaboration, being a normal attack, it is still doing more damage than that one point we have spent it into Heavily Wounded. And this is your skill order. Now from here onwards, we just want to max out the important skills. Now in this case, we want to max out Durin's Blood and then move over to Whirlwind, of course. And then we are going into All In. And then we are focusing our top R0 title a bit. I like to max out my R0 title first, just to have the special effect over here. Self damage against melee units increased by plus 10%. I really want this to happen. Then I'm going to spend all of my points into collaboration. And whatever leftover points I have, I would put into Hunt Down. And this is your skill order in the first build. Like this is the build where Gimli himself is dealing the highest damage. Not his army, 
Gimli alone. Now let me also show you his second build. This is his hybrid build. Gimli and his army are going to deal lots of damage. It is kind of a collaboration between those two, but I think this is working just fine. I like to have elven units in my army comp. For example, it could be march wardens, it could be sentinels or keepers. And I really like keepers in my army and I'm going to show you some reports and then you will see why. You want to have protect elves just so that your march wardens, keepers or sentinels are safe. They need to be bodyguarded by your tanky dwarven unit. And then let's just put two points over here, two points over here. And this is the skill order. Now watch this. This is a bit different. We put one point into break the fences, one point into whirlwind, and then one point into heavily wounded. As you see, we now invest one point into heavily wounded instead of all in. And then we move over to all in. So this is the difference. And this is the skill order of your hybrid build. And the reason why we have the skill order is because we don't focus our top respect zero title. So right now we have enough points to invest into these skills. Heavily wounded is going to deal lots of damage too. And I don't want that damage being mitigated by all ends side effect, which is why heavily wounded comes first and then all in. So now let's spend our points. Lot of the glittering caves. I want this to maxed out. Then I want break the fences maxed out. This is decreasing the enemy's defenses by minus 30%, and it is activated every other round like very reliable damage. Then I like to go over to Durin's Blood, max out Whirlwind, max out All In, max out Heavily Wounded. I am at level 46 right now, so I have four more skill points to invest. I could max out Heavily Wounded once I hit level 50. And the more respect you have, the better for you, since then you can get stronger by spending whatever leftover points you have into Experienced Warrior and also Hunt Down and Collaboration. After having introduced both builds to you, it is time to explain what strengths and weaknesses Gimli has. So his first strength is obviously that this commander has high damage himself. His second strength is that he is bringing anti-healing with him, like heavily wounded. This can be a hardcore counter against any commander who is relying on healing. I'm looking at Galadriel, I'm looking at Gandalf the Grey if he is focusing on healing, or how about Kirun? That guy has a strong healing mechanic. With this, you can counter commanders like that. What I also like about Gimli is, and this is his third strength, that this guy's army is low upkeep cost. Like he isn't expensive like, let's compare him with Aomir or let's say Theoden or Eowyn. Mounted units are hard to conscript, but Gimli isn't really relying on those. He is more relying on tanky units like Guardians, which are easy to conscript. Maybe Iron Warriors and Ram Riders, but, but that is still not as bad as Theoden. Mounted units are just hard to conscript and Gimli isn't relying on those. Now let's also have a look at Gimli's weaknesses. So in case of Gimli, I must say that CC is a strong counter against Gimli. And we have few types of CC that are very effective against him. The first one, for example, being Commander Madness. Gimli is attacking his own army and that is something we don't want to happen since look at all those skills. All those skills are just money and he's going to kill his own army with it. So Commander Madness is his first weakness. Including that, we also have Army Madness in case you are running a multiple unit army. Keep that in mind, whenever you have more than one unit in your army, they can still beat you, making your army attack themselves. So that is also something you don't want to happen. And his last CC weakness would be Silence. Whenever Silence kicks in, your skills over here are shut down, so you can't really attack when this is silence. You only have your titles active, but <laughs> this isn't dealing damage, right? Like Gimli's high commander damage is being shut down with silence. His second weakness is evade. How is Gimli going to deal damage when he can't land his hits? That goes also for his army, so Gil-galad can counter this commander 
very hardcore if you don't have Pursuit. Gimli's Respect 10 item has Pursuit as a special effect whenever you reach Focus Thunder. So that is also a way how you can bypass that weakness of him, but keep in mind that his Respect 10 item is giving Pursuit only for Gimli, not his army. His last weakness would be that Gimli is vulnerable against other commanders who are also dealing high commander damage. So keep this in mind, the more weaknesses you can check, the more you can unleash your Gimli. Now let's get over to the itemization part. Checking Gimli's purple gear is very easy, like I immediately knew what I want to give this commander. The battle axe with Flay, like this is out of question, the best item he can have in regards to purple gear. He is going to deal lots of damage in the first round anyway. By picking this item we ignore 30% of the enemy's armor, which is great. And then moving over to his uh, armor, we have a few choices over here, but the logic stays same like the, in my videos before. Are you fighting evil side? If yes, you want to have the Hallberg with fire protection. Are you fighting dirt side and they have lots of focus damage? If you are fighting keepers or let's say Oathbreakers or Galadriel, hey, how about the quilted armor with focus protection? But if you aren't fighting against focus damage, I would prefer the scale mail over the quilted armor. As a helmet, I would like to go with the full helm. Well, this helm is giving you blinding barrier or melee vigor. I think melee vigor is the more universal approach for all of your units being a bit more tanky like your melee units. But in case you need to counter elemental damage like a witch king or oath breakers, go with full helm and blinding barrier. Conscript, knights, they are easy to conscript and with this helmet, they mitigate elemental damage by minus 60% when you have max refined this. So this is a hardcore counter against elemental damaging armies. I like this a lot. If you are more scared of madness, like army madness, go with the horseman's helmet since this has resolved. In regards to our accessory, I think the hiff lane is a good universal approach, all the stats we need and also some self-sustain which is nice. But if you are fighting a Gil Galat, you are going to need Wizards Firework with Hunter's Mark. I like this accessory a lot, since in my Respect 5 build, I do have ranged units in my army comp, be it Sentinels or March Wardens. And with this, those units also get plus attack while receiving Pursuit. And this item is not just only giving your army Pursuit, but also Gimli. So it is a bit better than the special effect of his Respect 10 item. But guys, his Respect 10 item is out of this world. It is so good, it is totally worth investing into it. Speaking of which, here we have Gimli's Respect 10 item. In my opinion, this is the best weapon he can equip. Like, look at this, it has all the beautiful stats he needs. Might, plus attack for his dwarves, even more might, like percentage might, once you reach 150 strength uh, might and also 300 might you get an increase in might whenever you reach these thresholds and also just as i explained at the beginning of this video if you reach 100 focus you also unlock pursuit but this is only pursuit for gimli not for your army as a second choice i think the gigantic hammer can be very nice i explained to you that frenzy is giving you one more normal attack and whenever that is the case you proc your ability hunt down once more. You know that debuffing ability you have at your top respect zero title? This will further increase that mechanic. And I'm kind of curious how strong Gimli can be if he can keep that debuff up in every round with this. So I think this is his second strongest weapon he can equip, but I'm not sure. I have to reach out to all you Gimli main players with high respect level and with Prakenish gear. Have you tried this out? What I'm doing right now is just theory crafting, but just looking on the paper, this sounds like a match made in heaven. Then we also have the Hammer of Moria with lethal weapon. And whenever your, your skills, like aggressive skills, such as collaboration, whirlwind, break the fences all in and heavily wounded kicks in, you get a chance of procking lethal weapon, which is kind of nice. Lots of might and also plus defenses for your dwarven units. Amazing. And as my last choice, I also included Axe of Khazad Doom. But I think that the weapons to the top 
will perform better than the Axe of Desert Doom. This is just my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. As our chess pieces, like, whenever I'm not fighting evil side and I don't need to cover fire protection, I would like to go with either Durin's Blade and Tactical Maneuvers, or Dominance, or if I can't get a hold of Durin's Blade, as an alternative, I would like to go with Warbone Battle Plate and Fortitude of Soldiers. Like all of these stats make so much sense for Gimli and his army. Next on the list is Helmets, and this is kinda hard. I think the more universal approach is the Cask of Pride, like plus defenses, plus might. This is making your units more tanky. Also Fortitude of Soldiers, amazing stats. As an alternative, you can also have melee suppression, that also makes sense. But if, if you, let's say, are rolling with uh, Dwarven units, you can also go with Iron Bassinet. That too is behaving similar like Cask of Pride, but this has a bit more might to it. And in case you need to cover ranged damage, like let's say you are fighting against Su Nint, maybe Arrow Suppression is what you would like to go. This is reducing ranged damage received in the first three rounds by a certain percentage. If you have max refined it, it is minus 30%. And we all know that Sunint likes to go with lots of Arbalest. Like this can be a hardcore counter against that. And then we also have the Cask of Submerged Isle. This is the helmet I have uh, equipped him right now. I am running with Aegis since I like to play his Respect 5 build. And with my March Wardens or Keepers in my army comp, I am running 3 units, which is why I prefer having Aegis instead of Determination. But determination can also make sense since you don't want your Gimli to wail against his own army. So you have to like pick what you think is better for you. Like Sauron for example, I think that commander is making your commander mad or has a chance to affect your commander with madness in the first two rounds. But in the first two rounds Gimli isn't activating his skills anyway. So why should I pick determination against Sauron? Dreamar on the other side, I think his madness mechanic works every three rounds. So against Dreamar, maybe determination makes more sense. But yeah, you have to try this out and tell me what do you think works best for your Gimli. As our accessories, I have listed a few options over here. The fine smoking pipe, for example, this works well with his respect 10 item, since you need to reach that threshold of 100 focus anyway this will help you close that gap. And it has also the special effect Heroism, which is great. This is increasing your commander's damage anyway, like plus 18% if you have max refine it. If you don't have this, it's okay. You can still equip the Box of Knowledge for Warriors. I kind of like this a lot. Right now, this is only three times refined. So once max refined, I think you are going to have a 60% chance of triggering the effects below. And then, last but not least, we have the Fill of the Elders. Just as I explained at the beginning of my video, Gimli is a very slow commander and he has tanky units which are also slow. But with this special effect Blitz, you can give them initiative. And maybe that will help Gimli and his army to snowball. Just a theory. I'm not quite sure how this will work out, but yeah. I just wanted to share my opinion and also know what you guys think about it. Do you think it makes sense to go with Fiddle of the Elders with Blitz? It is time to have a look at Gimli's army composition. So this commander has a few choices. If you are playing him in his respect uh, zero build, like his uh, high commander damaging build, you want to have tanky units in your army. That could be, for example, a single stack of Guardians or a single stack of Cataphracts, max this out. As long as they are tanky, everything goes. Let me give you some examples. I like Guardians. These units are very cheap to conscript. And I also like to include some Ram Riders into my army comp around 750. Then also include one unit of Sentinels with a minimum amount, like a minimum command, just so they serve as decoys. And these guys potentially can take two hits because they have swiftness. So they are decoys, they misdirect damage that are meant to your main tanks towards them and help them survive a bit longer. So this composition over here could be one of your armies. 
In case you want to cover elemental damage, like you have equipped the full helm with blinding barrier, then you need to equip some knights. And this too works. Your knights, since blinding barrier is active, will receive 60% less elemental damage. This is also a nice way of fighting witch kings or let's say the king of the dead with his oath breakers. Sometimes you are going to fight long fights and your troops are going to be depleted. In that case you can make do with a 50-50 army composition like A, I have one tank unit and also my ram riders, they are tanky too, right? So let me equip them, make, make it 50-50 and also include again one minimum stack of my sentinels over here also maxes out maxes out 50 percent this too could be a viable option for you but let's assume that you have lots of resources and you have enough tanky units such as guardians or iron warriors how about you just run one unit of that army it could be also iron warriors instead of guardians it could also be a full stack of Muma kills. That is also very strong, but also very expensive. Now, whenever I run my Gimli Innes Respect 5 build in my hybrid build, I do something like this. So let's also have some ranged units. I have Elven Friend as a skill active. I still want some Ram Riders in my army to reduce the defenses of my enemy army. And then I want to have some tanky units. Now, if you have Iron Warriors, fill in everything with Iron Warriors. If not, go with your Guardians. And then I would like to have like an equal amount of Guardians and Sentinels. So this, for example, can work. This too can work. This is a great constellation. It can work. I am dealing lots of damage. And in the report section, you will see what this is capable. And then, let's say you have March Wardens, how about replace your Sentinels with March Wardens. This too is a very strong composition and your March Wardens have even Pursuit. So one weakness less you have to take care of. How about instead of your March Wardens, you go with Keepers. And this is something I have tried out in this season. This is working out so great for me. Like my, my Elven units here are being protected by my guardians and these units in general are very squishy but since they are protected they can deal so much damage but you will see in the battle report section after having praised my keepers so much i want to show you firsthand how strong they can be with gimli so here i have a report against the theoden and first things first let's check out our gear i have hammer of moria with lethal weapon Melee Vigor, Aegis, and Arrow of Pride with Iron Guard. I am running his first build, like his uh, the build where Gimli is dealing the damage by himself, but I wanted to try out how this build works with a 3 unit army in his team comp and also with Protect Elves. So look at this result. I mean, we both were full armies. Economy wise, he has taken a big hit, like this is definitely a big loss for Theoden. Let's also check out his gear. Cutlass, unfortunately not melee might. Filtered armor focus protection. Horseman's helm. If lane will without mend. Alright, so there is room for improvement in regards to his gear. And I see that he hasn't picked the skill where his mounted units get a chance of attacking once more. Maybe that, that, is, that is an issue. I think he needed to put some points away of Riding Excellence and put it into that uh, mounted unit's double attack. Alright. But if we look at the damage... Guys, look at this. The total damage we have done here is 370k. K. This... I can't remember dealing so much damage with my Gimli. Like, this is first time me seeing this high amount of damage. Now here, I have another report, not against Theoden, but also a very strong player. In this case, I didn't go with my first build. I used my second build. You see? Lord of the Glittering Caves maxed out with Heavily Wounded. I, I have also three units this time, the same equipment, nothing has changed. 
and this is the damage we are dealing. As long as we aren't countered by army or commander madness, this works just fine. And this Aomir is going to recover for a long time from this hit. Let's look at the damage. 344k in this case. In this fight I am in my first build again, let me show you. So it is my respect, like my top respect zero build. This is my gear with Aegis again. I am fighting a Sauron and this is what we have achieved. Let's look at the damage. 380k. Alright. And what gear does Sauron have? Harbor with Smite. Alright, so it is decent gear. Like one can't complain about the gear. Here I am fighting a Kirun, and let's see what spec am I using. I am in my Respect 5 build over here, my hybrid build. I have equipped the Wizard's Firework with Hunter's Mark this time. That makes sense with my March Wardens, right? They too get increased damage. And then we are fighting Kirun. Awesome gear. Great Plate of the East. Bone Mass with Hysteria. Bumps of Barat 2 and Iron Guard. Yeah, we are cancelling his healing. Gimli's healing nullification is no joke. Look at what we have achieved over here. 334k damage. Now, here I have a fight where I have lost, but I have done a few things wrong. First thing would be that I didn't equip like sentinels into my army comp. I needed that minimum amount of sentinels with avoidance to have some coverage as decoy. And then... Let's see what equipment I have. I have the Hunter's Mark, alright, that is a good way to counter Gilgalad. Maybe I needed to include some, some of my ranged units over here, just to have the damage. Maybe my damage wasn't enough to counter this Gilgalad. Gil has, wow, outstandingly good gear. I think this, all of this is BIS gear. And this guy definitely knows how to build his Gilgalad. Amazing opponent. How much damage have we done? By far not as much like the reports from before. In this report I am fighting another Gimli player. That guy is level 50, has a full stack of Muma kills that is very scary. None of his gear is max refined so this guy has lots of room for improvement and he will get stronger in time. He is running Gimli with his respect 0 and 3 build which is kind of scary against this. I am running also the respect 0 and 3 build, got wizard's firework with hunter's mark, but unfortunately my army isn't strong enough to take this down. In fact, there is no army that can take this down in one go. He can only do lots of damage to his economy because it is hard to recover from all these Mumakil losses. I think I could have done more damage with Bow Knight. So this is the only thing I could have done to further improve the outcome of this fight. Another report where I am playing in my respect 0 and 3 build, so this is my first build. I still have my Aegis helmet, my Iron Guard accessory, and I also got the Quilted Armor with Focus Protection. This is what I achieved over here. Aragorn, very strong, T3 Aragorn. This is his gear. One can't complain about his gear, like this guy is going for hardcore focus protection as I see. Wow. But against Gimli, that won't do him no good. This is the outcome. This is the damage we have done. Another fight, this time against the Moth of Sauron. So, this is my gear once more. Having Aegis will help a lot against Moth of Sauron's madness mechanics. And I am in my Respect 5 build. This is the outcome, this is his gear, you can't complain his gear, like this is decent gear. And yeah, this is the outcome. Let's look at the damage we have done, 300, almost 320k. And here I am fighting a very hardcore Dine player. So this guy is going with just one unit in his army, a tanky unit, the Guardians. My spec and gear is this. Wizards Firework, that makes sense, Respect 5 build, and my Sentinels. And he is going with this. Axe of Khazad Doom, Scale Mail, Full Helm with Melee Vigor, Arrow's Pride with Iron Guard. 
and these are his skill points. Interesting, he isn't going for Iron Foot. Alright. And this is what we have achieved. Our army has done almost 300k damage against him, against the T3 commander. I still think this is very decent. And consider the fact we still need four levels to go to make this an even fight. Here I am fighting Galadriel. She has lots of focus damage and is providing lots of healing. Let's see what could I have done better. I am also equipping the quilted armor with focus protection, so I am taking care of that weakness when fighting Galadriel. I got Aegis, but in this case, never mind. We don't really need this against her. Hunter's Mark, eh, not against her. Like, I think Erebus Pride with Iron Guard would have been better. I am in my first build, and this is the outcome. Still decent. Galadriel, also good gear. Yep. And how much damage have we done? 241k. Let's not forget about Gandalf the Grey. There are a lot of Gandalf the Grey players running around. And in this case, Gimli. Again, Wizards Firework with Hunter's Mark. March Wardens. I am in my Respect 5 build. My second build. And this is Gandalf. Alright, he can max out his gear a bit more. Like, I, I must say that maybe this wasn't an even fight since he has lots of improvement. But... I don't believe that's going to change the outcome of this fight. Gimli is doing this to commanders who rely on evade and healing. You, you can't win against this. Gimli can bypass the evade with pursuit. Gimli can bypass the healing of Gandalf with his heavily wounded. I think this will always stay the same. And this is the damage we have done. And there you go guys, this is my Gimli guide. He is an amazing commander and if I had to choose any T2 commander to commit into, it would be definitely Gimli. His respect 10 item totally makes sense and is worth investing in. I think I would choose Gimli and invest into his weapon. If I could spend all of my respect points I have from my Theoden, he is at respect 13 right now, I would gladly put it all into Gimli and make this guy my main T2 commander. But unfortunately, as of right now, that's not possible in the game. But game devs, maybe we can handle something. Like maybe we can talk about how to change things to give the players the better player experience. But yeah, Gimli, totally worth committing in. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.